Shot in the Dark. I didn't expect to come across a new game that I enjoyed this much so early in the year, but here we are. Shot in the Dark is an indie game made by the small studio Possum House Games, and it's actually just the second game they've ever released. I hadn't heard of this game before, so I was pretty much going into it blind. I guess you could say I was taking a shot in the dark. Ha ha ha. The game has a very simple but very clean 8-bit style, with a tricolor palette of black, white, and red. This may seem like it's only to create a simple art style, but these color limitations actually play into some of the core mechanics in the game. The game is played with the keyboard and mouse combo, keys being used to walk, jump, open doors, and reload, and the mouse being used for aiming and shooting. You're equipped with a single weapon for the entirety of the game, a six-shooter. Your shots are slow, anchoring you in place while you fire, and you're only able to reload one bullet at a time, which, like firing, can only be initiated while aiming. This may get you thinking that the gameplay is sluggish or clunky, but believe me, this is done on purpose. Making you commit to each move and forcing you to think and strategize as the levels get more difficult. It's a simple story, we're out for revenge on a bandit that has wronged us in some way. There's hints of it here and there as you progress, but the main focus of the game is on the gameplay. At first you're just dealing with slow moving zombies, which gets you accustomed to the controls. You right click to ready your weapon to make the crosshair appear, and then you click on what you want to shoot. You have to click on exactly what you're trying to shoot in order to hit it too. Almost like playing an arcade light gun game, but with a mouse. The gameplay feels pretty basic at first, but as the sun sets and it becomes night, that's when the game really gets interesting. This is where the limited color palette comes into play. Soon we're facing pitch black demons that can only be seen in very specific areas of the screen that aren't black, the darkness of the background masking them completely. For some of them we can see the reds of their eyes, which can help, but many of them keep their eyes closed, so you have to rely on things like lightning flashes or even tiny patches of grass sometimes in order to see where they are. You get killed from a single hit, so for parts like this you'll have to be extremely careful. Luckily, each room acts as a save point, and you can return to the level you left off on at any time. But this is only the tip of the game's enemy iceberg. One enemy appears to be a normal demon in the dark, with glowing eyes visible, but if you aim for those eyes, you're making a mistake. It's actually a lantern being held by the actual demon. Shoot it and it'll go berserk. Instead, you have to estimate where the demon's head actually is based on the lantern. Pretty cool. And some really neat animations here, too. There's this monster that can only be seen by its reflection on the body of water below it, and vulnerable floating ghosts that must be avoided, the occasional gunslinging skeleton whose crosshair you must avoid, and one of my favorite things are these sniper segments, where you have to get from one side of the room to the other while avoiding the crosshair of an off-screen sharpshooter, all while navigating through plenty of other monsters and obstacles. These are the parts where you really need to strategize with how you use your shots and reloads. You don't always have time to reload, so you have to keep a good count on how many bullets your gun currently has, since there's no ammo indicator on the screen. Figuring out when to shoot and when to dodge is very important here. Sometimes the sniper crosshair is coming so quickly that it's better to forego shooting altogether and just figure out the best way to weave through everything. In one section, you have to jump on invisible platforms that you can just barely make out due to the rain falling behind it. I don't think I'd ever quite see a game pull off an effect like this. The platforms are blocked out by your peripheral vision, forcing you to really focus on the spots where there's missing rain. Almost like an eye illusion. Another neat part is the occasional room where these cultists are trying to summon a huge red demon. The goal here is to stop them before they do, as it will most certainly kill you once it's fully summoned. Shooting the demon itself delays it a bit, but you have to take out every single cultist in the room to stop it completely. The game slowly introduces fresh new mechanics one after another, keeping you interested in what's coming up next, with a steadily increasing difficulty all the while. What really makes the game special though are when these mechanics come up again but are combined or utilized in even more creative ways. Sometimes you're in an entirely dark room, dozens of demon eyes being the only things visible. It seems like you just gotta shoot everything, but sure enough, they sneak in that lantern enemy as a trap. In these same areas, you'll often have to carefully kill enemies in select spots to reveal where the platforms are so you can progress safely. 
The demon summoning rooms start off with all the cultists on the screen at the same time, but eventually they're expanded to where you'll have to quickly check farther areas for the hooded figures before the demon breaks loose. Similar to these, but even more chaotic, are the ambush rooms where you'll just have a crap ton of dudes all trying to shoot you at the same time. At first, you can just take them all out quickly while standing still, but eventually you'll have to snipe these guys in a very strategic order while also avoiding the crosshairs. One mistimed shot and you're toast. We've already established how enemies can get visually lost in backgrounds that match their color, but this gets even more interesting when the red demons are introduced. At first, they're merely faster versions of the normal ones, forcing you to take them out first. But then you get to rooms like this. Red enemies visibly running left and right, but black ones as well that can only be seen when they're passing by the red ones. That means if you take the red ones out first, like you've been trained to do, you're screwed. You have to use the red demon's bodies to locate and take out the shadowed ones. These are just a few examples of the super cool enemy and level mechanics in the game. I was really impressed with what they were able to come up with. Unfortunately, you can only really appreciate how well this works with the gameplay and the fun challenge it provides firsthand. I don't want to give everything away, so I'm going to stop there with the examples. Let's wrap things up with an overall review of the game. The visuals are simple, clean, and creative, doing way more with three simple colors than you might expect. The music is fantastic, mixing together Old West and Haunted House Bittune vibes. The game is challenging, but in my opinion fair, with a good increase of difficulty that certainly leaves the toughest level for last. And the challenges it does have are just so smartly designed, it's really cool. The game also has the option to have a visible ammo count, which may make the game a bit easier for some players. As a lover of bosses, I have to mention that there is a boss at the end, and it's done incredibly well. Your first time fighting it, you feel overwhelmed at what's going on, but then after a number of tries, you slowly figure out the strategy to beating him until you should be able to do it very consistently, which in my mind is basically the perfect boss design. I do have to note that the game is fairly short, with most players seeming to finish it in around 2-3 to three hours, though it may take longer for some. For $10, some people may be a little disappointed with the shorter playtime, but I've always been a quality over quantity guy myself, and this game is true quality. Plus, there are plenty of achievements for you to shoot for if you want more to do after finishing the game. I'm super impressed with the sophomore title from Possum House Games, and I'm definitely gonna have to give their first one a try now. Great job, guys.